Morning everybody, welcome to TNT, a magnificent day down here at the pier at Boat Lagoon and behind me is the brand new Lisa from Five Star Marine and this is the boat that, uh, well they're describing it as a sports cruiser, a new addition to the fleet and it complements their 12 Lucas boats that we're all well aware of if people are taking private tours out to the islands off Phuket. And uh, we hope to find out more about Lisa in another program. But for now, let's get started with today's news. Hi everybody, welcome to the last day of the week for TNT. Of course, we've got our live programs tomorrow and Sunday at 9 a.m. Hopefully you can uh, join in. But today we're coming to you from Five Star Marine at Boat Lagoon in Phuket. And let me say it is a magnificent day here. A beautiful sunny skies and uh, there is actually quite a nice uh, northeasterly breeze. But where I'm sitting, I'm sort of in a little alcove here. There's no air circulation at all, there's no fan and I'm sweating like a pig. Anyway, let's get on to today's program. There is a lot to talk about, and we start with The Nation, Thailand. Their headline, Chewit drops another triad bombshell as Rungsaman attacks government complicity. And the story says that the Chinese triads arrived in Thailand under the cover of a foundation established by a Chinese national called Yu Qin Shi, according to the whistleblower who we've got to uh, become very familiar with over the past couple of months. He keeps on dropping these bombshells and putting the government and the police in, well, let's say a rather difficult, uncomfortable position. Yu Xinxi apparently established the Shangxi Association in Thailand as a front for triad activity, using it to forge relationships with Thai establishment figures, including monks. Now, there's going to be a lot of Thai politicians reading this this morning, shaking their heads and thinking, how does all this information get out? But I think we've got a lot to thank Chew It for. Let's go on with the story. And it keeps on dropping bombshells. The Shangxi Association in Thailand acts as, as a trafficking ring by luring Chinese people to Thailand and its founder Yu Qingqi has escaped after being exposed. He also claimed that Chinese criminals established connections with Thai military and police officers before launching their operations in Thailand. Rang Saman, who is a member of the opposition Move Forward Party, accused the government of delays in tackling Chinese triad operations allegedly run by Tu Hao, who we've come to know a lot about his activities. He's currently under arrest and in remand. He also alleged that the Prime Minister Prayu chan cha had failed to follow up on the case. Rang Saman said the delay may be because a company run by Chayanat that's uh, Tu Hao, that's his real name, rented at least 33 tour buses from a construction firm run by Prayut's nephew, and he suspected that the buses were used to transport Chinese nationals suspected of being involved in illegal activities in Thailand. And he also claimed that several politicians have connections with Chinese triads, including the ex Palang Pracharat Party MP Tamanat Prompao. Now, you may remember that name, Tamanat Prompao. He was an MP for the Pa Yao province in northern Thailand, and he came to notice, well, about two years ago, when a newspaper in Australia, the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, did quite a long article saying that he was in fact a drug trafficker. He'd been arrested in Australia for trafficking heroin and had spent four years in jail in a Thai prison. Now, when all this came out in Thailand, of course, there was quite a kerfuffle quite a lot of noise around us this morning obviously and uh, the constitutional court said well it didn't happen in Thailand so it doesn't really matter. So that's Tamanat Prompao. He also came to the attention of the government when he effectively tried to launch a coup to dislodge the Prime Minister during a parliamentary vote last year. So that's the sort of person that he is. Let's read a bit more. And uh, the number of immigration police officers suspected of helping Chinese gangsters to stay illegally in Thailand has risen from 80 to 110. That's digging deep into the immigration department. And that's according to the Deputy National Police Chief on Monday. Rungsaman, Rungsaman Rome, said Chinese triads had seized large areas of Chinatown's Yaorat Road from locals. 
So the story that just keeps on giving, that story just digging deeper and deeper as we find out more and find out about more people, including officials, Thai politicians and generals who are linked with all these rorts, with these China, Chinese triads. With thanks to Five Star Marine, and we're down at their offices today watching their boats heading out to the islands around Phuket. They've been our sponsors ever since day one. We're now up to program, I don't know, about 120. I forgot to count number 100, but they've been with us all the time. So thanks to Five Star Marine. Very hot here as we're doing our program down here at Five Star Marine. A beautiful day in Phuket, but I, I could do with a little bit more breeze or maybe a fan. And uh, tomorrow we've got Brendan joining us live and then on Sunday, Sue. And on Sunday we uh, hope to be auctioning off the rest of our toy elephants. And they're those toy elephants that were made by Seeds of Change. And uh, hopefully the ones that are remaining, we can auction them off and maybe even better some of the bids that have come in so far. So thank you to all those people that have supported that uh, so far. It'll be finishing on Sunday when we do a final auction with Sue Sunday morning at 9am Thai time. To our next program, we go to some economics with Thai PBS World. Thai economic gurus predict more growth, exports and tourism this year. Three of Thailand's business, banking and capital market gurus are optimistic about the improved economic performance this year with a tourism boom, increased foreign investment and exports, which they say will drive the growth rate to 3.8%. A lot of countries would be very happy with that indeed. So the chairman of the Thai Chamber of Commerce told a seminar that he expects as many as 30 million foreign tourists to visit Thailand this year. A lot of things will have to fall into place for that to happen, but at the moment we're heading in that general direction. And he's urging the government to step up promotional campaigns to attract more Chinese arrivals. He said the Thai private sector has been cooperating with the government to attract more Chinese investment. Well, just a few things to say about that in regards to tourism. If the Chinese keep arriving in the numbers that they are, and that just keeps on just incrementally improving every month, then the Chinese will become once again an important part of Thailand's tourist mix. Then there's the Russians, which are by far the most numerous nationality visiting Thailand at the moment. And a lot's going to depend on exactly what's happening in Eastern Europe. Uh, to whether they're going to keep on arriving in the numbers they are. And then we've got the Indian market, which is probably the most sustainable and stable market of tourists into Thailand at the moment. And I just noticed the other day that Air India had ordered the largest order of planes in the world. I think nearly 400 planes from both Boeing and Airbus. And uh, they're certainly looking to expand the number of Indians uh, traveling around the world. So that's just a bit of a perspective about what's probably going to be happening to tourism in Thailand this year. Now we've got the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Thailand who says the global economy is still slowing, but growth and in inflation in individual countries is varying. In the case of Thailand, he said inflation this year will not be as high as it was last year when food and energy prices doubled but businesses still bear the burden of inflation as reflected in the high price of products. And then we've got the president of the Stock Exchange of Thailand saying that Thailand's economy is recovering with an expected higher growth rate. And then we've got the president of the Stock Exchange in Thailand saying that Thailand's economy is recovering and that the baht currency strengthened to 34 baht per US dollar compared to 38 baht at the end of last year. I get paid by Google, so I'd be very happy if the uh, US dollar stays high to the baht, but at the moment, that's not the case. The strong points of Thailand, he says, are the food industry and tourism. And although they're considered as old industries, the new technology has been introduced in the food industry, including the production of plant-based food. So a bit of an economic overview there by uh, what well, we've got people from the Bank of Thailand, we've got the Thai Chamber of Commerce and the Stock Exchange of Thailand represented. Let's move on to our next story today on TNT. This from ASEAN Now, alleged fraudster in online gold scam arrested at Suwanapum Airport on return from South Korea. So just two days ago, the 
alleged ringleader of the Macau 888 was arrested. And now this person, let's find out more. Crime Suppression Division police were waiting at Sawanapum Airport in Bangkok yesterday for the return of a woman called Jiratanan. She's 33 and from the Songkla province. She didn't fly back from the Songkla province. That's where she comes from. Let's find out a bit more. She was named in a warrant for defrauding the public of some 200 million baht. It's alleged that with a net idol celebrity, she ran a Ponzi-style scheme advertising gold for sale at below market prices. Now, the article says that some made money on the gold resale, but ultimately the pyramid collapsed as the two ladies, former lovers allegedly, made off with the cash. Earlier, the net idol was arrested at a condominium in Bangsu in Bangkok, and Jiratanan got wind of her accomplice's arrest and fled to work in South Korea. But believing that the heat had died down, she returned to Bangkok straight into the arms of the Crime Suppression Division. So another scamster in custody, and Thailand's jail's getting very full with these scammers. Let's go to our next story, and a bit of a thumbs down to the BBC and uh, the writer in Southeast Asia, Jonathan Head, for this particular headline, and this is following the death of young Dom, the 17-year-old former, well, he was a wild boar, one of those kids caught in the caves in uh, Chiang Rai. And this headline says, Thai Cave Rescue, Duong Pech Promtep's Death Shatters Happiest of Endings. Well, I think that's uh, just in poor taste, uh, using happy endings as a cute little headline in such a tragic story. So big thumbs down to both uh, Jonathan Head and the BBC on that one. And uh, just reading a bit of that story, the astonishing saga of the Thai boys rescued from the cave in July 2018 was the rarest of things in the news business, a tale with an almost flawlessly happy ending. And I get what they're trying to do there, but I just think it's in very poor taste. So big thumbs down to Jonathan Head if you came up with a headline or to the sub-editor that did. Let's move on to our next story today and update. Police confirmed Thai woman found hanged in Patong. Not a murder. Canadian man detained. Likely not involved. And just within that one headline, I think we've got the entire story. Let's just go to what this says in the PhuketExpress.com. And the Deputy National Police Chief Surachat Hakpan has confirmed a Thai woman found hanged in Patong was not a murder victim and her Canadian boyfriend who was detained at an airport trying to leave Thailand was likely not involved. So that's the latest on that particular story. Investigation is pending. And now uh, from Phuket-Go.com, French motorcyclist charged with hit and run after driving into a Thai pedestrian in Patong. Now, I'm not actually going to run the video here because uh, it's pretty nasty, but um, there's a link in that particular story if you want to actually watch that video. And a French man who was riding a motorbike has been charged with hit and run after a Thai pedestrian was badly injured in Patong last week. A Thai woman was crossing Soi Sanam Yen in the centre of Patong when she was hit by a motorbike travelling at speed and the rider did not stop to help her. And it says that four days later on February the 14th, the rider returned the motorbike that was caught on CCTV to the motorbike rental shop the rental shop noticed some scratches on the bike which had been fixed and the rider was identified as a French male national. So the police were able to track him down using the CCT footage and he was charged with reckless driving at high speed and hit and run causing injuries. He's going to be in a whole lot of pain for that uh, doing a hit and run. Apparently the woman's got critical injuries and uh, as I said if you do feel inclined you can watch that video. This is actually a couple of frames just before we can see the young woman walking across the road and then in the next few frames the motorcycle rider zooms in, knocks her flying and uh, she gets thrown around about five metres down the road. So that story reported in Phuket-Go.com. You're watching TNT with thanks to Five Star Marine and there's a link in the description of this video.
Last day of the week here on TNT. We've got our weekend programs coming up where you're all invited to join in. There's no memberships, there's no payments or anything. You can just join in the stream and make comments and ask questions. We've got Brendan on the program tomorrow and Sue on Sunday. Now uh, to another one of these media stories that perhaps didn't need to actually be reported, but uh, Coconuts Bangkok have pointed this out. That's coconuts.co, their Bangkok edition. Korat Zoo releases Lion Couples Valentine's Day sex tape. We want to know more. Two African lions celebrating Valentine's Day in the most natural way possible had their lovemaking broadcast to the world. And this happened on uh, Wednesday by zoo officials. And a large lion named P. Nayak was filmed mounting his lover called Nong Cesar before finishing and striding away in footage posted by the zoo in Korat. This is Nakon Ratchasima, about three hours northeast of uh, Bangkok. During their short-lived sex session, a man's voice can be heard loudly, loudly counting the eight seconds that pass. And so the veterinarian from the zoo said, this video clip's made for entertainment purposes only. There's no intention to infringe copyright or privacy in any way and no intention to communicate in a bad way. Not sure if they got permission from the lions. And down the bottom there, just why did the zoo need to share this fleeting moment of feline fornication? Why to educate the public about the African lion mating season? So we all know now, and if you absolutely have to, in that coconuts.co story, there is a video there that you can watch if you really think that you need to. And to another one of these strange stories, and this is not to do with Thailand, it's not even around Southeast Asia, but I absolutely had to read this one out because there are quite a lot of these sushi bars around Thailand, in fact, a lot of Japanese expats, and uh, in fact, the most numerous number of expats in Thailand are the Japanese. So there are quite a lot of Japanese restaurants and we've seen these sushi trains. Well, get this story. The morning after, a Japanese restaurant combats sushi terrorism with AI cameras. Let's get into this story. Many people in Japan have been outraged by a recent trend dubbed sushi terrorism. Videos across social media show people carrying out all kinds of unhygienic acts like licking the spoon for a container of green tea powder. Another video which has had more than 98 million views on Twitter showed a person licking the top of a soy sauce bottle and a teacup's rim before putting them back at a branch of Sushiro chain. The company said it's replaced all the soy sauce bottles and cleaned every cup at the affected restaurant. Imagine people watching viral videos of people licking cups and dipping their fingers into uh, some of the food. To combat this gross trend, one chain said it would use artificial intelligence to look for suspicious opening and closing of sushi plate covers. And the story originally from Nikkei Asia says that if the system detects suspicious behaviour, it will alert employees. Now, these people that have been doing the sushi terrorism have, of course, been caught on camera, so I would have thought they're fairly easy to identify. Let's check out some of the video and uh, showing, oh dear, sticking his finger onto that meal, proudly showing who they are. So these are these sushi trains. I'm not sure if you've uh, been to one of these restaurants. Quite entertaining. And uh, people, of course, grab them. But this, you don't do this. You don't stick your finger in your mouth and then onto the food or get a teacup and have a good lick of the rim. So uh, there's plenty of videos. If you just type sushi terrorism into your search engine, uh, you can watch hours of sushi terrorism underway. But with that, thank you very much for joining us on our TNT today. Been a great week and I've really appreciated you joining us on the channel. Thank you to all those people that have subscribed. For those of you that haven't, it doesn't cost you anything. We're not going to send out emails or anything. It just means that the YouTube algorithm does some magic and it helps our channel along. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.